I generally vote here in Canada for the New Democratic Party, which is the Social Democratic Party. Um, they'll never form a government, I don't think, at least federally in the provinces they often do, but um, they're more of a, I don't know, not necessarily a protest party, but more of um, a party that uses its position in the House of Commons to showcase certain ideas and to press for them as opposed to actually uh, planning to form a government. It's just not likely to happen. Something like the Liberal Democrats in the UK. It's a, the NDP is a influential party, even though they don't expect really to ever form a government. Now, they're the Canadian version, I guess, of the British Labour Party, a little bit farther to the left, I think, but um, still pretty, you no know, moderate, um, playing by the rules type thing. <coughs> now, even in the 19, in the 1930s, even the New Democratic Party, or the predecessor to it, the CCF, um, was more or less strongly opposed to immigration from countries other than the British Isles, or perhaps um, at a stretch, uh, they believed that we should accept maybe people from France or uh, the Low Countries or Germany or Scandinavia, but that's really about it. Um, you, you know, say a Hungarian or a Spaniard or an Italian, a Pole, whatever, these were not considered assimilable peoples. Um, now, Canada, of course, is changed completely, but it's it's an interesting illustration of how attitudes can change, where even the left wing would sort of say, no, we um, only want immigrants from countries that we believe that people will, you know, we believe that these people are capable of fitting into our society. <coughs> now, the question is, um, if this is racist, or if this is bigoted or ethnocentric or anything like that, or ethnocentristic or whatever, um, does national sovereignty trump the fact that it's ethnocentric or racist? Does Canada, as Canada, as a sovereign state, have the right to say, we only want to accept immigrants from countries of our choosing and we get to decide the criteria that we're going to use to determine whether or not somebody can immigrate here. First of all, A, is that racist? Secondly, racist or not, is it that country's right to do that? I'm not sure the two issues are as easily disentangled as I seem to imply, but it's an interesting thought. Um, you know, we're the, the, what's all the go now is Europe and the United States and everything, and how they both seem to be turning their backs on immigration, at least psychologically. Um, <coughs> even if their motives are purely racist or ethnocentric, um, is that their right? Is that um, something that a, is that a right that a nation ought to possess in terms of what we believe are the norms of politics? The very fact that this is being bruited as an idea tells you just how much things have changed. Um, and I think that this is an idea that's going to be more and more pressing especially when you consider the economics of immigration. In the case of Canada, we, it's a vast country, at least by the standards of the Western world. It's ludicrously underpopulated. And immigration is such a big business in this country, such a, I shouldn't even say just a business, but it's a, just an all-encompassing Canadian phenomenon that we we have a system built right in. How do we manage the immigration process that we assume is always going to be part of our country, um, or at least until the country is full, or whatever we want to, uh, however we want to define that. <coughs> we have to talk about these things in Canada. Um, 
because we've determined that we need more people here, and if we need more people here, we're, you know, what are the nuts and bolts of all that? Uh, it's a debate that's as old as Canada itself. My ancestors, the Irish, were originally really hated when they arrived, the same as in the States. They were just considered too alien, too odd, too out of sync with Canadian norms, such as they were back then. Nobody feels that way anymore. Um, <clears throat> the Irish are just considered, eh, you know, perfectly acceptable. Nobody would even consider the oddity of mass Irish immigration to Canada anymore. People might even like it. Mass migration from, say, Somalia might be seen very differently in today's world. Things have changed. From a human rights perspective, from an uh, international sort of geopolitical perspective, from a basic perspective of common humanity, um, where does national sovereignty begin and end? What, ethically speaking, can a nation actually do to restrict or alter the character of immigration to its country without actually being considered out-and-out -out racist? Um, this is a completely different issue from, say, going after minorities in your own country, or visible minorities, as we call them, or people that actually kind of aren't part of the mainstream stick out. That's not what I'm referring to here. Now, the two are related in people's minds because the same person that wants to restrict immigration to people like us, the same people are often the ones who also want to put the screws to anyone who isn't like us, who's already living here, and who, who, whose ancestors may have come here a hundred years ago. Um, <clears throat> it's this, it's the, the same sort of thing as you see you know, people discussing Donald Trump. Trump might not be a racist, but if you were a racist, who would you vote for? <laughs> um, we have a political party on the extreme right. It's, um, well, I shouldn't say, by Canadian standards, the extreme right. It was called the Canadian Alliance. It's defunct now, but it was a powerful party in its time. And it kind of occupied the same position as, say, Trumpism occupied in Canada, although it never took over the levers of power as it has in, uh, in the United States. Um, if just because you voted for the alliance it didn't make you a racist, but if you were a racist, you were probably going to vote for the alliance. Um, it's an interesting topic, and I think it's going to be more and more pressing. <laughs>